Yes, Lord, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's really lovely to, to just be able to be here and share with you. Um, one day I mentioned to the congregation, and there's so many, I'm sure probably you have talked about so many different aspects over the last uh, two, two, two or three weeks, probably now. So um, I, would, I wanted to obviously bring something to you that I really felt that God wanted you to have. Um, because so often and, and we, we can just make things a, a head exercise or we can just make things... Um, we've, a lot of us have been sealed for quite a long time and, and you know stuff with transformation and you know stuff with this and that but it's not, it's not the knowledge that changes you, it's what God wants you to know at that particular moment that real word, that word that's alive that brings change to our hearts and um, so the thing that I really believe that God wanted me to tell it, just to chat with you about this morning and to share with you was just talking about the the process with the transformation and to I uh, might just bring some sort of encouragement to you as as we walk through that process together. Uh, because sometimes process can be misunderstood, sometimes process um, can 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 feel a negative thing sometimes, which it isn't. Um, but it, process usually brings some sort of challenge to your flesh that will reap benefits and rewards in your spirit. Um, because obviously we've got this flesh and we've got the spirit and, and the Lord all the time is working on us and changing us and transforming us to be his children, to be his people. We are, we are the kingdom of God on earth. We are his ambassadors on earth. We are his children, his church, his, his army. And yet, if we just come into this here, um, whenever I came heart to Jesus when I was 12 years old, you know, that makes them, I didn't really feel like an ambassador, I didn't really feel like a minister of the gospel, I didn't really feel like a, a part of the army of God. I was just a 12-year-old boy um, who had just given my heart to Jesus and just found that Jesus had forgiven me, and I knew that I had a purpose to live for. But these things are, are, are the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers and as children of God, that God works through over time and, and, and over seasons as we walk through them together. Um, so I just want to bring some sort of encouragement, hopefully, as we walk through the processes in transformation. Um, because I think it's really important that we understand the heart of Father God um, in transformation. <clears throat> because when we talk about transformation, um, sometimes we make it very human, we make it very earthly. Because even in marriages, you know, Trevor, men want to change their wives. <laughs> wives <laughs> want to change their men. <laughs> Parents want to change their children. Children want to change their parents. And we just want to transform everybody around us. Because, and it's not this, because we just irk each other and uh, do stuff wrong and, and people annoy us. And well, I must be doing something right because of you, but that or not, stay at next time. Oh, that's lovely, Trevor. That's lovely. You must be definitely doing something right. Or else you're just very right. gracious. She's just very gracious. Healy's been transformed. Healy's <laughs> becoming like Jesus. <laughs> Look at her enemies. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure that's not true. Really that's not true. Really 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 really. You've got a lot of healing. Um, but the, the, the process of transformation is it's a positive thing. It's a good thing in our lives. And uh, whenever we give our hearts to Jesus, obviously something really mighty happened at that moment. I remember the night I gave my heart to Jesus. I'm sure you do remember as well, it's a very special and significant time. Um, but that, that's, that's the start, that's the starting point. And there's so much more there that happens. And uh, we were just nervous whenever I come in. I've been uh, born again and saved 28 years this year, uh, the 29th of September 2000. Sorry, yeah, 1990. 29th of September 1990. And uh, so that's 28 years ago, that's a long time ago. 1990. 1990, yeah, not 1690. 1990. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it will go with everything. It is, it's 28 years old, really young fella. I mean, that makes me sound really old, and I'm not. But I'm walking in a place of transformation in my life, even 28 years later, and I know Rosie, Rosie's just, just a few years, 
older. I have to be very careful. Good morning. That's our rose story this month before. Ah, Rosie, Rosie's a strange chicken. But, but even the rose, I mean, no matter how long you go down the road, you're constantly walking with transformation. There's a work that the Holy Spirit's doing within us. And, uh, and that's, that's a really good thing. Um, so I want to bring some encouragement in the process. Because transformation is a process. Um, and it's the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's what the Father's doing to make us more like Jesus. Um, and so I'm going to share a few things that I've, 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 I've known it down. And there's a few, after was asked me, sometimes I look pretty specific about things. And, um, <laughs> but there's one morning the Lord woke me up, uh, probably about five or six o'clock, it was very early for me. And I um, spent an early experience. And the Lord just kind of invaded my thoughts with, with things. I took my phone and started type some stuff that the Lord was just dropping my heart to share with you. Um, so um, the Lord knows what I'm like, he's very patient with me, and he knows I need those definite little encounter moments <laughs> to make sure that I, I follow through. <laughs> um, because if, if, if I've got something from God, if I feel like it's something from God, then I will, I will do it definitely, I won't back on it. <laughs> um, so here, when God made you, he didn't make a mistake. Because sometimes we think whenever they go saying we want to change each other, we, we see that, that there's a mistake made, there's something wrong. So we want to, if Haley wants to change Trevor, there's something wrong with Trevor. Haley wants to change me once. Or Francie wants to change me. <laughs> Which I'm sure she's had that type of experience before for the last uh, 16 years. But um, when God made you, he didn't make a mistake. You were birthed on the earth, but you... <laughs> Everything that makes you unique, everything that makes you Roberta, Roberta, Victoria, I mean, Trevor, everything that makes Trevor, Trevor, perfect. Trevor, and the depth inside, that stuff inside, we're not talking the nonsense now, we're talking about the stuff deep inside. That stuff, although you were birthed in the earth, that stuff, the essence of who you are, originated in the Father's heart in heaven. Amen. You are here by God's design and by God's choice. You're here because God wants you here. And you're here in this time and in this season for this time and season. You were made for this time and season by the hand of God, with the thought of God, with the heart of God. God thought of you to place you in this time and in this day. So there's no mistake made. <coughs> there's nothing wrong with you. You're a wonderful creation. In the depths of your heart, you're a beautiful person. You're a good person. You are, Rosie. Never doubt it. You really are. Ladies, you, you are wonderful ladies. God created you to be something special on the earth. You're designed and created by Father God with thought and intended purpose. He's the master designer. Yeah. Nobody like him. Look at, look at the I love creation. Worship, worshippers, people who who really have a heart for worship and which hopefully is most of us in this room but the worshippers tend to really appreciate and, 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 and see God and nature and, mm -hmm. and wildlife and all that stuff so if you went to my house there's tons of books about wildlife and nature some DVD sets of Blue Planet and all that sort of stuff because when I look at that stuff I just go wow it just, it just pulls my heart because that's my God that's my father that made all this and you can see God, you know, when you go walk in a forest or you go along the seaside, um, you just sense God and, and know God's heart. God's a master designer. He made you with intended purpose. Yeah. Amen. You know, He knew what you were going to do on the earth. He knew what He called you for. Yeah. And He designed you. He made you. He thought of you. He put together your very parts of who you are before you even reached this planet. He knew about you before your mom and dad did. Or anybody else did. And he designed you for the purpose that he intended you to, to carry out. So I'm, I'm saying this here because I want to encourage you because there's nothing wrong with you. The essence and the depth of who you are, who you were birthed into this earth to be, is the Father's design. It's, it's God's heart towards you. Genesis 1.17 it tells us, so God created man in his own image. 
In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. That's in Genesis 1.17. And so the basis of man and who you are, you and I, we, we are created in God's image. We're created in his likeness. Now think about that for a second. There's something about me, which probably you haven't quite seen yet, but there's something about me that's very like God. <laughs> there's something about you that is something of God. There's something of God in you, in your design, in the fabric of your DNA. There's something of God and who God is in you. That's how special you are. That's how unique you are. You are creating God's image and likeness. And I want to, um, I want to we look at Psalm 139. Now, I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. I um, hope you don't mind. <laughs> it's in, if you're going to buy it up, you'll get, you'll get the Passion Translation there. Yeah, it's called an Allison yesterday that's all the Passion Bible, Passion Bible. Really, really? <laughs> it's a beautiful translation. Um, and you, you can pick up the, a copy of it, probably with 15, 16 pounds in a faith edition or Amazon or whatever, um, if you're interested in it. But it is in your Bible app. Um, Psalm, I'm just going to read from verses 1 to 18, Psalm 139. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul, and you understand my thought even before it enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak, even before I start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. <coughs> and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is, this is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. You under, your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there raising. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me, your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you, or to ask the darkness to hide me, for your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. There is no such thing as darkness within you. The night to you is as bright as day. There's no difference between the two. You formed my innermost being. Shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside. And wove together, sorry, wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. <laughs> I have to remind fancy that sometimes. <laughs> the complexity that stands here is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Pray for my wife, amen. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything, everything you do is marvelous, marvelous, marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, shaping me from nothing into something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Verse 16, you saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of my days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. O oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on the seashore. When I awake each morning, you're still with me. Amen? Amen? That is the heart of God towards you. You have been designed and created by God for a purpose, with a plan in mind, with thought in mind. You are a good person. You are a great person. There's something of God inside you. You're created in the image of God. 
you have created with so much good, so much destiny, so much of God's plan, so much of God's thought, so much of the Father heart of God, filling who you are. Your DNA really is with the, the, with the Father. You're, you're the fabric of your being. Cries out a, a story or a, 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 a line of, of a line of connection to where you've come from. It's amazing when you study the human body and, 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 and the human frame and how man works from, from the mind to the, the body to all these different functions. It cries out to an amazing creator. And that's you, that's who you are. And so sometimes we come to this transformation, it becomes so, so much a negative thing and so much a, you know, what's wrong with me, God? I, know, I must be a really, really bad person. And all the time there's this image, there's this fabric of God inside you. By design and by purpose, and by intent, by thoughtful intent, that God is placed there. And God is going to work in your heart, in my heart, to manifest that on the earth. Hallelujah. We know, know that, that Romans chapter 8 talks about the, the manifest of the, the true sons of God in the earth and, and how creation longs for those sons. There's something inside you that God's working to bring out of you. And that's a great thing. Hallelujah. And maybe you're the last person to know it. Hallelujah. There's some people that are the last for people to know truly what God has placed in there. And you know what? I don't even think we do really truly know it. We'll look at Joseph in a few minutes. Uh, but, but Joseph, you know, he just had the dreams of, he, he saw the dream of the sheaves bowing down, and he saw that he had a dream of the, the stars and the moon bowing down before him in the dream, and the sun. I mean, what, what does that mean if you have a dream like that? Did, did he ever actually really envisage that God was going to take him? from the backside of nowhere and place him at the head of a nation to save a nation. I, I, I don't think he ever would have known that fully. He, he found it out as he went along on a bit of a bumpy journey. But um, the process of transformation is not about changing you into a different person, but it's about restoring you to who you already are. And this is something the Lord spoke to me Quite a few years ago, I was a wee bit younger, and I was going through a, quite a difficult, challenging time. And I was aware of the, the hand of God working in my life. I was loving God, I was following God, I was serving God. It was a challenging time, and but I sensed that there was a, something of change going on inside me. And that's what the Lord spoke to me back all those years ago as a young person. He said, the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, I'm changing you son into who you really are. I'm not changing you somebody that you're not. I'm not transforming you into a place where you're not who you are now, or you're some different person that you're not good enough now. Or I am restoring you and I am changing you into who you really are. In the beginning, God made man his own image. Transformation is about restoration. Transformation is about restoration, restoring us to our original image and identity, renewing our original and intended purpose. And each one of us will know, whenever we come in this earth, there's so many things that we've walked through, there's so many challenges, so many painful situations, so many words that are spoken over your life. Think of just walking through school alone. I mean, you're going to be a disaster. All of those words of people speaking stuff to you, over you, about you, even sometimes your parents, and their own brokenness, and their own flesh and sinfulness said things or done things or those things shape the essence of who you are on this earth and shape your mind, shape how you live, how you walk, how you think, how you see, how you perceive, how you live in this earth and how you function in this world and God comes in our lives and steps into our lives and says son and daughter I'm about to walk you through a place of change and transformation that's going to take you back to who you really are. I'm going to restore my image and your identity and my identity in you. I'm bringing you back to who you truly are and who I've intended you to be to do what I've intended you to do. Amen? Amen. Because you can't do it with all that nonsense. 
with all that brokenness that this world heaps on you, with all the challenge and pain and the difficulty of the years it tries to shape and form you, that stuff, you can't, you can't change the world with that stuff. It's only God can take that stuff, redeem it, buy it back, pull it back, and use it to change you, transform you, and bring you back in restoration to who you truly, truly are, and how he's intended you to be and function on the earth. Hallelujah. So transformation, I believe, I humbly suggest to you, is about restoration. About bringing back that image and identity that God has already placed in you. Hallelujah. I want to just take a wee second and look at Joseph in the pit mm -hmm. to the palace. We all know the story. Um, it's found in Genesis chapter 37, 18 uh, to, to 26. Yeah, 26. And the earlier part of the of, of Genesis chapter 37, you can read as well. And we'll tell you about Joseph's dreams and how he. Thought it was a great idea to share with his brother <laughs> and learned that sometimes you have to keep your eyes shut and say nothing rather than try and share everything and look like the lad. Um, as a result of all that, Joseph's brothers, it was, it was Rachel's son, a very favourite son of Jacob, and his brothers were very jealous and were very discontent with his, his favour and his place in his father's heart. Um, and the father sent, uh, Jacob sent Joseph out to take supplies and, and to, out to get to his brothers in the fields. And his brothers decided it was a great idea to kill him. <laughs> and then he said it was a great idea, instead of killing him, just outright they might throw him down at first and, and work the whole thing out. Now, Joseph, Joseph had the dreams. God had given him words and, and spoken these things to him and shown him a revelation. And then the next thing he finds himself in the pit. He finds himself thrown down a pit. But people intent on not only harming him but killing him. Now, in those circumstances, you kind of wonder well, what was he thinking about in that pit? What was going through his mind? You know, he had all these big dreams. And you know, what, what about all these people lying down and all these things going on? And, and suddenly he's, he's about his life's about to be taken. But the thing that the Lord spoke to me was this here. When God speaks, authority is released to accomplish his will that has been revealed. When God speaks, authority has been released to accomplish his will that has been revealed. Okay. And over each one of our lives today, I know the Lord has spoken great plans, great destiny, great thoughts towards you. We have a good Father. He's a good God. Yeah. You know, I, know I, I love my children and I, I have good, good thoughts toward them. I want nothing but the best for them. Any good mom and dad want nothing but the best for their children. Mm -hmm. And he's so much more perfect than I am. He's, he's so much, this be really bad English grammar here, he, he's so much gooder than I am. <laughs> he's so much better than I am. He's so much more wholesome than I am. And he's got great plans for you. But in the, in, in, in the place of transformation, sometimes walk through a process that isn't easy and that brings challenge. And I'm not saying that God always, Father God always, uh, creates the circumstances or creates painful times. But I can assure you that painful times will come on the earth. I have not been a believer yet who has not walked through challenges, difficulties, discouragements, moments of failure, uh, all these different things. But there's no one of those moments that God will not work and bring you to where you need to be. And where you need to go. So no matter what it looks like in the earth, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What, no matter what your process looks like, what your journey looks like today, or what it will look like this week or tomorrow or whatever, it doesn't matter. What God has spoken has released an authority on the earth to accomplish His will that He's revealed in your life. It's going to happen. He's going to get you to where you need to be. You can be assured of that. That's His word. That's His promise. He's faithful to His word. He's faithful to His promises. He'll do it in your life. 
But you know, sometimes we want that microwave of Christianity. We want to just, you know, there's things that God has spoken to our hearts, and we know, we know what God has said, and, and we so want just to have it happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's moments when it doesn't. Yeah. Because God, you see, sometimes I get really interested in the promise, and I get really interested in the things that God has revealed. But all the while, while I'm interested and really focused on the promise, God's focused on the process. <laughs> because there's something that has to happen in me. There's something that needs to change in me. So that I can carry what He has promised and so that I can do what He has designed this man to do, I need to change. There's things that need to be stripped away. There's things that this world was placed upon me. There was thoughts of men that was placed upon me. There was thoughts of people placed around you. There was things that try to shape you. Things of things that try to mold you. Things that the devil tried to use to destroy you. And Father God loving this steps in and says, Listen, daughter, listen, son, I'm, I'm going to get you there. You're going to go there. The authority's been released. I've spoken, my word will come to pass. But we need to walk through this process. We need to walk through this to get to where you need to go. Hallelujah. You cannot short circuit the plan of God for your life. I can't short circuit. I, in worship, in the place of worship, there's so much of God has spoken to me of what He wants to do. <coughs> Stuff that I, I don't even know yet. And, and I, I, I wait for those things. I long for those things. But I can't force those things. I can't. I, I, our place is simply to surrender and walk. Walk with him through it. Walk with him. Take his hand. Walk through the place of change. Walk with him through the place of process. Because what he's doing is bringing out who you really are. Lovingly working in your heart. Working in the depths of your soul and being. And bringing out his image and his likeness in you. Because this world needs Jesus. It doesn't need Derek Simpson. <laughs> You know, the, the church in Ireland isn't waiting for Derek Simpson to turn up in, in who I am. The church in Ireland needs us as, as expressions of Jesus. Images, people who carry the image and likeness of the Father's heart to the generations and to the church and to the nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. We serve a Redeemer. My God's a redeemer. Amen. It's not something he does, it's, it's who he is. That means he can't help but redeem. Because that's who he is. He is a redeemer. So everything in your life that goes wrong, that's gone wrong, that's been wrong, that might go wrong, he's going to redeem it. So if you find yourself in a pit with no way out, don't panic. Your father's a redeemer. He, he's going to sort it out. He's going to bring it back. He's going to bring you back. He's going to bring you back to the design, the original design, the original plan. He's going to bring you back to the original word because that's where his story is released. Hallelujah. You're going to get there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold into Egypt. 17. He was 30 years old when he was made an overseer in Egypt. Sold in Egypt at 17, 13 years later, 30 years old, he was made an overseer in Egypt. When he was 39 years old, that's whenever his brothers first came to visit him in Egypt. So the dreams he had as a teenager are fulfilled when Joseph's 39 years old. And between then, between there, and between then and now, what a journey he walked. Look at, look at the life of Joseph. Look at his life and let the Father speak to you about the process and then what God was doing in his life. But I think he probably had things to learn because I'm not quite sure he probably should have told his brothers all that stuff. And, you know, there's probably development in Joseph's character and his maturity. Maybe even a bit of pride, maybe. I don't know. But there's things that the Holy Spirit was working in Joseph. And probably around about 41 years old was when his brothers came back and returned to Egypt with Jacob. Hi, Gary. See you, Trevor. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a place of waiting, there's a place of, you know, of process, and there's a place 
where between what God said and where you need to be going, there, there's a space, there's, there's, a, there's a place and space. Mm -hmm. And in that place and space, that's a place where God works in our hearts. And uh, was, I was, strangely, I haven't talked to people like this for quite a few years, mm -hmm. and I was actually speaking with a man on Friday night as well, and, um, and I spoke to them about the waiting place. Uh, and, and perhaps this space we could be called the waiting place, where we've got a vision, we've got a dream, we've got a word, we've got something of God deep inside us. But there's a time and there's a waiting and there's a pause, there's a season we walk through to get to where we need to go to. Hallelujah. And I want to just say this, when you're walking through the process of transformation, when you're walking through this place of waiting between the dream and between the time, between the pit and between the palace, between here and now and, and there where you're going, wait for all that you see and hold in your heart. Wait for it. Wait for it. You know, don't, don't, don't force it. Don't, don't try to make it. Don't panic. Don't, don't try to knock doors down. Don't try to go those your way through. There's stuff that God wants to work in me. Before I get to where I need to be, there's stuff that God needs to work in my heart. You know, we always talk about, you know, man knows the downside, but, but God knows the heart. And that is so true. But that also means that God knows this heart and sees what needs to be changed and transformed. And what needs to go through a better process to get to where it needs to be, to carry what he wants it to carry. You know, there was a time a few years ago, about uh, three or four years ago, when I walked through a relatively difficult season, whenever, um, in my heart I was perceiving how and a, a few people were mistreating me within within a church setting. How they were responding to me and reacting to me, and, um, and what they were, you know, they were going some talk on behind doors and all sorts of things. It doesn't happen in church life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Those sort of things don't happen in church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You've been around your soul enough, you realize that, that uh, the person sitting in front of you is imperfect just like yourself. <laughs> and uh, they're probably talking with somebody like you talking with somebody. <laughs> so, um, but we just need grace for each other. But you know what? When I was walking through that time just back a couple of years ago, you know, I was saying to the Lord in prayer, and do you know what God has to me about? And he didn't keep telling me about all the bad stuff that these people were doing, and, and they were rascals. There was rascality going on, and he was <laughs> And he revealed that it all came out. Tell you. He can't be the birthday. Honestly, see if you walk with honor in your heart. If you walk, God will expose what goes on around you. Walk with honor in your heart. Stay, stay true to the Father's heart. And what happens around you, God will expose. But. All that God kept speaking to me about was how I respond in my heart. Mm -hmm. How I've got to walk in love in my heart. I have got to love, how I've got to manage myself. How I'm accountable for me. Now, I would have loved, you know, you know if you love somebody, sometimes you would tell somebody to come and get this happen or this. That would be amazing. <laughs> but you know, God doesn't do that. God, there's, there's times it's struggle and times of challenge and, and God wants to, you want to talk about that time of challenge to God, but God comes to you and begins to talk to you about you. Because we're walking through process. And it's important for me to be able to do what I do and what God's called me to do, to be able to respond in love to people when they're not nice. Whenever people misunderstand you or, or don't get you or, or, or whatever, how I hold my heart it's what I'm accountable for before the Father. And I need to be able to walk like that. I need to be able to hold myself like that. In a place where I can keep my heart steady and true before the Lord. Authentic and real. Amen? Amen. And we wouldn't want to be any other way. Amen? So walk through the process and let God do it in your life. Trust Him. I'm, I'm really fast here on time. This is so awful. Somebody has eaten up time here. And it's, 
It's not me, I'm not doing anything. Um, Habakkuk 2, 3. You all know this here, verse 4. The vision is yet for an appointed time, and it hastens to the end to fulfill it. It will not deceive or disappoint. You're not going to be disappointed in this journey. Yeah. In the process and in the change, and in the, even in times of pain or misunderstanding or struggle, you're not going to be disappointed. Yeah. It's going to turn out okay. Because God is faithful, amen? Though it tarry, it says, wait earnestly for it, because it will surely come. Yeah. It will not be behind, sorry, it will not be behind hand on its appointed day. It has an appointed day. Mm -hmm. Just if you have an appointed day. You're here for this time. God's brought you here for this time. You're made in this image. <coughs> he's crafted you for the purpose that he's intended you for. Hallelujah. And that vision, that destiny, has an appointed time that will come to pass. It's going to come to pass. Romans 8, 28, 29. And we'll read this to you from the Passion Translation. Forgive me. <laughs> Romans 8, 28, 29. It says, so we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's plan of bringing good into our lives. Mm -hmm. Every detail, yeah. God's we has it woven together. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. You are his lover who has been called to fulfill his designed purpose. You know, if, if you're if you're if you're to work in a, as part of a car, God's not going to make you a kettle, amen. Mm -hmm. You're going to be either a handbrake, you're mm -hmm. probably somebody very to be a throttle, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> a ten <tenth> of glory. <laughs> you may want to be a battery, ready to go to park. You may want to be a spark plug. A glow plug, glow worm. <laughs> a clutch. A clutch. I was about talking about your jeans there, Roberta. <laughs> you, there's all, you know, God has intended purpose for you, and you're going to be designed for that intended purpose. For he knew all about us before we were born. Verse 29 of Romans 8. He knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. So that's we're being we're being transformed. We're walking through process. For that image of God, for that likeness of Jesus, to begin to radiate from the inside out. Amen. Mm -hmm. This means the Son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's been a long process of 28 years. Mm -hmm. And this is what you get after 28 years. But I'm becoming more like Jesus. And so are you. Should it be 28 days, 28 months, 28 years? I don't know. If you're rosy, 54 years. <laughs> But if, oh, yeah. Whatever length like the time, and it's not even 24 years, Rosie just has been checking. Yeah. Whatever length whatever like the time, there's a process of working in us and making us like him, amen? On Friday night, I shared this verse with the man and chapter, went through the chapter and stuff. And this. But anyway, just really quickly, they that wait upon the Lord, Isaiah 40, 27 mm -hmm. uh, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You can read the rest of that verse and the rest of the verses around. There's so many beautiful stuff in there. It's a really beautiful chapter. It's really like a trans. Uh, it's like a, it is like a transformation chapter. Uh, the first part of his eyes is all about the judgment that the Hebrew and captivity and all sorts of stuff And then chapter 40 comes in with a brand new direction and changes the whole book of Isaiah from there on. Um, but this word to wait upon the Lord, it's a, it's a Hebrew word. Which in our language we spell Q A D A H, uh, which I think is pronounced something like Kova. And it means to expect, to wait, to look patiently for, to wait, to hope, to be confident, to trust, to be enduring. To expect, to wait, to look patiently for, to wait, to hope, be confident, to trust, to be enduring. And I want to tell you that the place of process, the place of transformation, wait upon the Lord. Wait upon, be patient, be enduring, be full of faith, look for, expect, hope, be confident. The place of process is a strong place, it's a place of strength. And that's what this verse is all about in Isaiah 40. The waiting is that it's a place of assured 
uh, fulfillment, a place of hope and expectation. Amen. It's not like a, a husband endlessly waiting for his wife, not knowing that she's waiting back while she's doing the shop. And, you know, it's, it's a place where you're standing at a bus stop, knowing that bus is when they arrive mm -hmm. in a few minutes' time because they're all still on the road to the, the timetable since it's when they arrive. God's going to turn up for you, God's going to come through for you. Wasted, uh, sorry, waiting time is never wasted time. There's not a moment in your life, if you're in a place of waiting, if you're in a place of process, there's never a moment of that time. Waiting time is never wasted time. Because in that place, in your waiting, God is working. Hallelujah. God is working in me and my waiting. Be assured of it. You're becoming more like Jesus and his, his image is coming out. I read this here the other day. God's delays are not his denials. Just because he hasn't, doesn't mean he won't. His time is perfect. Trust his timing. Hallelujah. And I'm almost through here. So if I can just give me two minutes. And this is what the Lord spoke to me that morning that he woke up as well. Transform people will see people transformed. You see, this is not about me either. This is this is about what God wants to do through me. Joseph, he had the plan, he saw the dreams of the people going down to him. But that wasn't, I just would have thought, oh, this is going to be as long as he was going to down to me, and this would be that. No! God had a plan where he was going to set him in place in a nation with a strategy and a plan to save a people from dying from starvation. And if you look at our, our lives, there's many layers of purpose. There's the, the place of the personal purpose where God just works in your life and gives you promises and tells you good things He wants to do in you. And because He loves you and He wants to lavish things upon you and do great things in, in you and through you. Yeah. But then there's the purpose where God says, listen, just I need you to save the nation. This, this people's going to die from starvation, from the famine. I've got a plan and I want to do it through you. But then even beyond that, if the nation would have died, do you know what? God was working a plan through Joseph that would save the nation of Israel because Jesus the Messiah was about to come to save mankind. If Joseph wouldn't fulfill his personal destiny and walk, the nation of Israel would have starved to death. And the lineage that Jesus was to come through and be birthed into this world through would have been cut off and God doesn't, God wasn't about to let that happen. And there's things that God is not going to allow to happen in your life in the place of change. Transform people will see people transformed. Think of Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 9, Peter and John, on the way to the temple, silver and gold of enough, but such as a half give by thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Men transformed. Three questions. What has the Father done in your life? What has the Father done in your life? Number two, what has he revealed to you? And number three, what do you have? Such as I have, give I, I do. Does that point like that? I want to have money to give him. <laughs> 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 I don't have money, I don't want to turn it. <laughs> Sorry? And number one, what has the Father done in your life? Okay. Number two, what has he revealed to you? And number three, what do you have? Transformation begins with a revelation which releases restoration in the hearts of God's children. The revelation that God brings to your heart will, 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 will release a restoration in your heart and in your life that's going to bring transformation. Remember I, I said I really do believe that the process of transformation is truly a restoration mm -hmm. to the image and likeness of God. A couple of scriptures to give you as we finish. Philippians 2, well, I've actually got 20 scriptures, but I'll not be good one to you. <laughs> Philippians, I just realized I'm over page. Glory! Dear, 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 that's awful. Okay, let's get going. Philippians 2 13, hallelujah. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while affectionate work in you, energizing and creating you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. God's will work in you, amen. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2.10, in the Passion Translation this time. <laughs> we have become his poetry, 
Another version will say it's worth in check. We have to come as a portrait, but see that creator who's just sitting there doing this thing. She had painted a picture, right to the poem, right to the story, crocheted a beautiful blanket. You, you have become his portrait. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Amen. 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 Psalm 23. If you just note it down, I won't go through it all. Um, have it, note it down. If you read it in the Passion Translation in the Bible app, you'll, you'll find some beautiful words and some beautiful interpretation of what God said. First verse, Lord is my best friend and my shepherd, I always have more than enough. He offers a rest and peace to me in his luxurious love. It keeps going on. But this, this is, I, I put this here because I thought that God would say, you know what, I'm the shepherd of your soul. I love you. I'm your father. I'm nothing but good intended towards you. And I'm going to get you to where you need to be. Trust in the process. Look to me in the, the change. And, in the place of where you're coming to a point of transformation, and I'm working in your heart, just trust me. I'm your shepherd. Your experience of walking through this might be difficult, but there's a place in Psalm 23 where we can know the tender, loving, and, and, and shepherd and heart of the Father. Yeah. Romans 3, 38. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power of God's or beneath. There is no power that can ever be found in the universe that can distance us from the passionate love which is lavished upon us through Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Nothing's going to separate you. Last verse, Psalm 138. You keep every promise you've ever made to me. And this is where your prayer has to be today. As we finish, I'm praying, this is our prayer. You keep every promise you've ever made to me. Since your love for me is constant and endless, I ask you, Lord, to finish every good thing that you've begun in me. Psalm 138, verse 8 in the Passion Translation. I ask you, Lord, to finish every good thing that you've begun in me. Amen? Amen. And can I give you one last thing? <laughs> one last thing. This is, this is totally it. This is totally it. <laughs> As we walk through this process, and this is a way to this is a challenge, this is a change, do these three things. I suggest, you can ask Holy Spirit. Number one, get to know Father God through His Word, through worship, and by talking and listening with Him. Don't, don't forget to listen when you talk to him. He wants to talk. He, he's a relational God. He wants to talk. He's your daddy. He's your father. He wants to talk to you. We often talk in prayer, but make sure you listen as well. Number two, spend time with Christians, brothers and sisters. You'll need encouragement. You'll need people who love and walk with you through the process. And number three, experience and truly know the love of Father God. And that's there's a reference to Ephesians 3, 17-19. And that's where I'm finishing this morning. It's nearly afternoon. <laughs> so thank you so much for being patient. But I shared those last three points, not for any kind of scriptural A, B, C, D, and this is what you did. That's just what I find in my life. I've often said the best version of me, the best version of Derek, is whenever I've been in God's presence, and when I've been in His love, and when I've been in that place of worship and and spend a time with him. That's where you get the best version of me. All our fleshly stuff, you know, it just seems to magnify it. It gets much more as we, we walk further away from God, you know? So that's why I'm telling you to spend time with God. Listen to him, talk to him, worship him, read his word, be with other Christians. And the last thing was most transform, transformational in my life, and this is really impacting over the last couple of years, it's getting to know the love of God. And those verses in Ephesians will, will help you through that. Mm -hmm. Ask God to reveal His love for you. Truly how much He loves you. I'm telling you, if you want to stop sinning, get a revelation of His love. I, I, I can't tell you why. I can't, I can't give you a comprehensible reason. But 
The more revelation of the love of God you get, the less that you're going to do. I have no idea how God does it, but all I can say is God is love. And love is active, love is real, love is a force, love is God. And it transforms you from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you all.